What is up, down, and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? Welcome in. It's another rep of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Got some, got some little tidbits, some tasty morsels of off-season news to kind of round up that have slowly been trickling in. Not, not any of the big, absolutely flabbergasting, earth-shattering changes, but interesting nonetheless. It's, it, you know, you got a little leak in the roof of the off season. And that is a couple of these rumored signings coming through. And yes, every once in a while, even if it is not the biggest leak, we're not, the roof's not coming down. You still got to empty that bucket that's been filling up. So that's us taking a little trip, checking in on some of these rumors around the LCS and the LEC of what we've got coming our way next year. And the reality is the last few years, the LCS and the LEC EMEA have been the crazy bonkers offseason with players going to places you would never expect, teams forming that you never thought would form. But I feel like this year, the LCK and the LPL are going to be the ones that are stealing the offseason show, which is why these are just the appetizers as we wait for Worlds to wrap up before the offseason really kicks off in Korea and China. This is your breadsticks. This is your soup. This is the salad before the main course that's going to happen. We're expecting some pretty big changes, some shifts in what's going to be going on. LCK, LPL, the rules that are going to be there about how you're building out your roster, the salary, all these things, as well as looking at big teams like T1 and JDG, both most likely not being able to have those full reunions once again. Going to be some big changes coming through, and that's why you're seeing the LCS, LEC, these rumors get started right away. There's going to be some world-class talent uh, moving around into that free agency market. Maybe not world-class, but one free agent looking like he's locked up. And now, one of the most intriguing LCS rosters for the second straight year is FlyQuest because they got Mr. Jensen likely coming in that mid lane to really keep the eu persuasion going for this squad now matching up alongside Bwipo inspired and this young bot lane of masu and busio and despite being kind of lost in the middle tier i think of the mid laners that we had last year for the lcs and how much of that you know there's there's a question that how much of that is about what the situation and everything else around dignitas was going on and how much of that is jensen and his individual ability to perform at this stage in his career because i think you saw the slightest of twinkles maybe a little bit of a sparkle of that old jensen some of that uh, skill and capability coming through for dignitas now it's going to be with FlyQuest, and I think when you're looking at this FlyQuest roster, the way that it's built out and the role that Jensen is supposed to fill, it's got to be more like that C9 Team Liquid Jensen, where he is able to be that figure in the mid lane for the team. And honestly, him coming over at this point in his career kind of points to me, we might be getting, for the first time in years, a team that is really emphasizing, enabling, and playing through Whippo. On the top side, so many times on Fnatic and Team Liquid, it was kind of just good luck, pal. Lock in, whatever. Maybe we'll give you a gank every now and then. But I wouldn't be surprised if Inspired is spending a lot of his time top side getting Whippo ahead. And that's the thing when you're thinking about, you know, of course, it's going to be a little bit of a funny thing with the LCS and imports, but you're going with Whippo, Inspired, and Jensen. That EU trio rolling on through in that top side, top section of the map, it's going to be something that you're looking for, that chemistry from, that innate ability, that communication between these three players is going to be a big one. And as you're right, Whippo is going to be someone that you can use and mostly will use as that outlet for pressure, power in that top side, the creativity that he can bring to the rift combined with some of the playmaking that Jensen has shown in his career are definitely good things in the signs for FlyQuest. And this organization quickly trying to make us forget about the super team that was 2023. This is a full reset, not a single starter returning from what we got out of last year. And it doesn't bring the same maybe kind of potential and promise and hype 
that the LCK version of FlyQuest did last year, bringing in Vikla, bringing in Prince, you know, Spica, Impact, all these things. And then now you look at where you've pivoted to, you still have, you know, bringing in these imports, you still have very high profile players on this FlyQuest roster. It's going to be a little bit different, of course, though, with the uh, d different expectations and growth probably for the bottom lane. It's going to be something to keep track of as well with this FlyQuest roster. Yeah, the expectations as a whole, obviously not going to be nearly as high for this squad as what we got last year. Whippo, a year away from competitive. What level is he going to be at? A rookie AD carry. But honestly, the ceiling for this team is probably top three, I would say. It should be. It really should be. This is one of those squads I think I don't want to make that judgment right away at the start of the split and everything else. Give them a little time to settle is how I'm feeling about it. Because if this thing does sort itself out, they can get this engine running the right way. This is going to be a good FlyQuest team for that year. And the other little little bit of in tandem, LCS news, as Jensen leaves Dignitas, Dig says we got to fill that void of one of the LCS greats. So let's do the classic North America thing in and bring in a slumping at best middle tier solo laner, Dove, coming to join alongside Rich, who it sounds like they're going to be building around. Dove was last in the LPL. He played spring on IG and then he was benched in summer. You remember he roll swapped the top at one point in the LCK. I don't have incredibly high hopes of him coming and dominating the LCS. Unfortunately, a player like Dove, it feels like we have seen what he is capable of offering. And, and if you're really banking on trying to make the maximum of your import slot, that's not going to be where you're getting it with a player like Dove. And I think we've seen a lot of talk around, of course, having these young domestic players. We've seen APA, we've had JoJo Pion years past, Insanity this past year. These players, Palafox at Worlds, stepping up and delivering. It is one of those ones where you kind of question wanting to bring in a player like Dove and, and you know, build or maximize or find the potential in a player like that compared to the domestic inner scene that we've got here in the LCS. A little bit questionable, but as you said, I think this is the angle that they're playing around Rich, trying to enable Rich to be a more of a pop-off carry player. I guess bringing in Dove and then the communication is one of the angles that they're trying to get that done. And the truth is, at this point in his career, I don't think Dig were probably spending a ton of money to get Dove over here. And, you know... We've seen middle tier LCK players come and do pretty damn well in the LCS. So we'll reserve our judgment for now, but I'm, I'm not exactly ascending Dig to any better than they were last year with Dove coming into the roster. We'll wait to see until the rest of, uh, especially the bot lane is filled out in this squad, but Dig is Dig. So we'll lock them in for that seventh place uh, playoff finish in the LCS. Over to the LEC side of things. Supports have been playing musical chairs. You've seen cheap esports talking about this. Uh, I've seen a lot of different communities. Everybody except for Mickey on G2 is seemingly on the move when it comes to supports in the LEC. One of the latest ones, Hillisang, we knew was going to be off of Mad Lions. He's going over to Team Vitality, and you'd say, I can't wait to see him pair it up with. Photon's the only player on this roster? What is Team Vitality going to look like? Oh, no. One year too late for Hillisang to join up with the Vitality squad. He said, I can't wait to play with Upset again. We're going to really pop. Uh, oh, up Upset's not on the team anymore. Oh. No. So uh, th this is one of those ones where, you know, we can, we can hear this rumor and, and everything else and understand that, okay, well, yes, there is Hillisang. And yes, there is Photon. You can't make any type of understanding or even an evaluation of this type of addition to the team without understanding what else is going to be figuring out and, and filling out the rest of this roster. Such a, a change is going to be happening for this Vitality team without those players from last year and how significant they are in the scene. So it is going to be that new look, new retooling for this team. Hillisang adding in is not is, is certainly not a bad start, I would say. Yeah, and I know people were low on him after the world's performance where he wasn't at the highest level, but he's still on that Mount Rushmore of EU supports, and when he is playing at a high level, he 
elevates the entire team to honestly a championship level. So a good starting point for this Vitality roster. Obviously, so many question marks on what the rest of this squad is going to be looking like. Hill is saying finding a new team is not a surprise at all. Trimby not finding a team is a huge surprise. Much like Hill is saying, I know you're feeling low about his individual performance to close things out at Worlds. But the fact that his replacement on Fnatic, they decided to go with Kwang Dong Freak's Jun instead of Trimby? I, I, uh huh? What? And yeah, you're, you're right with the double huh, from me as well, my man. And scratching my head. This is crazy to see that this is the way that Fnatic is choosing to go. Because again, you got a crazy, crazy to even get Trimby in the first place, how that worked out through the LEC season. And then you saw the effect that he had throughout the summer run, the type of player that he is, the creativity, the way that he helps support Noah, the, just the friendliness that he brings to that team environment. This is a good guy to have on your squad. I don't know where they saw the evaluation of, you know what, we need to pivot to something else. And never mind the pivot to Jun uh, from kind of, you know, certainly a question mark for me. This is unfortunate. I think if you, you go and look at, a, at his social media, you will see Trimby as you know kind of reflected a little bit about this examined where things might have gone wrong and you know uh, in his own play negotiation those type of things but then he has also said that you know what i can use this time positively stepping away for a little bit you know might not have a spot now but i will be good enough to earn a spot again real soon and i'll be able to reinstill some of these old habits some of these practice things that i did before that maybe have slipped away in the past year or so so I am very hopeful that we will see Trimby again and we're going to see that good style of Trimby. But it is unfortunate to see that Fnatic is choosing to go a different route. And it does sound like it was a bit of a surprise to him. He thought he was, you know, a featured guy for Fnatic. They were looking to bring him back. Obviously not the case. It might end up being a good thing for him sitting out a split because absolutely, I guarantee you, by spring, teams are going to come calling. Either they're going to have... A support that was underwhelming for them. They feel like they need a mix-up. At some point in 2024, Trimby is going to be finding himself on a starting roster. On the Fnatic side, the only angle I can see that makes sense they make this move is if they feel like communication was an issue with Noah and they want to bring in another Korean player to help move that bot lane forward. But ugh, it must have been real bad because Trimby was the catalyst for the entire turnaround for this Fnatic team. Yeah, and it would it'd be really unfortunate if that's the, the route you go through because, you know, again, not to knock it, it's certainly something that we have talked about with many other rosters and many other regions about adding in another player in that import position to just, you know, shore up a language gap, to make sure things in communication, whatever, can be at a better level. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think at this point, what you're gaining with that compared to what you had and could have built with Trimby is not where I would be making a move like that. Sure, I think that is one of the options for Fnatic and, and, and a reasonable one to want to enable, accelerate uh, Noah's ascent to being a top-tier ADC. I think that the, the route with Trimby was going to be the one that I would have chose. He's going to have an even bigger chip on his shoulder if and when he does return to that LEC lineup. If you've been paying attention to all the behind the scenes going on with Koi since this merger with Rogue, it's been a bit of a mess. Obviously, we don't know all the details. I've heard that some staff weren't getting paid. iBay was paying out of pocket. Rogue and their parent company asked him for more money. So he said, nah, nah I'm good. So we're not having Koi for the next year. We don't know if they're going to be rebranding back to Rogue or if their parent company, Infinite Reality, will be the team representing, which is one of the worst, cringiest esports organizations' names that you could have. But somehow, in all these budget cuts, salary cuts, they're looking like their roster's even better than what we got out of last year with Marcoon coming in the jungle and Zoelis, one of the most hyped up support rookies coming into the main stage. And then that core of Larson, Comp, Shigenda, staying. That's a legit contender. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You better believe that that is going to be a contender in the LEC. They should just go back to Rogue. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, it was sure, a good logo. You, it was. It was a very good fit. You can... You know what? You can come up with something fresh. I'll believe it. All these other type of things, too. 
but go back to the classic rope for now. Don't leave us in this limbo of infinite realities. Oh, get out of here with that. Looking at these signings, I am excited about these ones. Specifically for me, of course, yes, there is, uh, you know, the question mark and the potential and hype that could be around the support position. It's Marcoon. Marcoon is such a big addition and uh, for this team and unlocks extra power from the guy that you just resigned and are keeping in Larson in the mid lane is the big one for me. What I'm looking at, what Marcoon is going to be able to do, what he's already proven he can do, and how he can play at the LEC level. This is going to be the type of change that you wanted to see for this team heading into the next year. And you know what? Mark Kuhn, we talked about after his time with Excel, he was immediately dropped into a leadership role with a lot of younger players in his next, ende next endeavor. And he was still a kind of young player himself. But I think you could see him thriving in that, you know, kind of headshot caller leadership opportunity now you drop them in a lineup with some big veterans in larson and comp who maybe aren't the loudest voices in the team but marcoon's gonna have guys that he knows what their role is and what they have to do that he's gonna be playing around with so i'm excited to see him specifically on this roster it's one of those situations where you can really you know understand and make the argument that you know what not only is Marcoon going to step into this role and be individually better than, than you know, replacement? And then he's also going to make your other players, like Larson, like Comp, perform better and, and have more options available to them. I think being in this environment, being with players like Larson, is going to be something that is going to help Marcoon himself accelerate and increase his performance in the LEC. So don't be sleeping on rogue infinite realities whatever it is vying for a top spot in the lec this split uh you know maybe even top three depending on what the rest of these roster shakeups end up looking like there's still lots of teams we're waiting to be filled out and see what the full lineup is going to be but that's it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thank you so much for watching and we will catch you on that flippity flip